שבוע טוב, a good book. I'll read, I'll tell story number 26 of the ship Chayav al Shamtov called Rab David of Kolemai, or Kolemai. This is a story that happens uh, in the period prior to the revelation of the Balshemtov, when the Balshemtov is still a tzaddik nistar, although, as the story will reveal, the tzaddikim nistar and the other tzaddikim, uh, uh, hidden tzaddikim or, or the rebuilt tzaddikim, the, no, the known sages of the time, start to identify the Balshemtov. Rav David, uh, I'm sorry, the Rav Dover of Linitz, who compiles and tells the story of the Balshemtov, says, I heard from the from Rav Gedalia of our community of Linitz, and also from my father-in-law, meaning from Rav Alexander Shochet, this story that truly happened. Rav David was the Magid Misharim of the holy community of Kolimei. He calls it here in Yiddish Kolimei or Kolimei. Um, the town is also known as Kolomi or Kolomea. Uh, in the shores of the uh, Prut River, in the present-day um, ivano frankivsk Oblast in western Ukraine. At the time, of course, it was part of the Kingdom of Poland and Lithuania. So this Rabdovit from that, known as the Rabdovit from that place, was a Magit Misharim, also was a, a preacher of righteousness, as was the, the position at the time, was basically a Musa saying Rav, a Rav that comes and shakes up a community and um, instigates them to do tshuva and to, to go back to Hashem and to rectify their ways. So this Rav David of Kolomei was traveling, was going from town to town, collecting Maos Hanukkah, collecting a, a tzedakah prior to the days of Hanukkah to be given as coins for the poor in the holiday of Hanukkah. And as he was traveling from time to town, he uh, made a mistake, made a wrong turn, and uh, got lost. And by Hashgacha Pratis, by divine providence, find himself in front of the house of the Baal Shem Tov. Not yet knowing that Rabbi Israel is the Baal Shem Tov, not yet knowing that such a tzaddik is here, he finds himself in that place. At the time, the Baal Shem Tov was in his basis, his, his, his uh, house of uh, seclusion, doing his meditations, his uh, secret learnings, the things that he did. And um, Rav David finds that the, the Baal Shem Tov's wife is in the house alone and asks her, where is your husband? So she says, she makes, uh, makes up a story. Let's call it a, a white lie, a explanation that her husband had gone to the Mochsen, um, to the, the uh, tax collector's house, and was helping him uh, feeding or, or giving uh, what to drink to the animals. So the uh, Magid Misharim above mentioned, meaning Rav David, um, asked, uh, what will I eat here? What can I eat? He's, he's hungry, he's in the middle of his, his uh, fundraising collection trip, what can he eat? So she says, she says, my husband Shecht, he slaughtered kosher a chicken, and uh, she used this knife, please check it, take a look, and if it's good to you, if this is a kosher knife, then I can cook this chicken for you. So she gives it to him, he inspects it, the, the knife, and he says, it's kosher. So she, um, starts cooking the chicken and she goes to tell her husband right she has to tell her husband what happened the Valshemtov comes and serves the uh, Magid Misharim serves Rav David like his humble little person is serving somebody very important with great honor comes the Valshemtov and to allow me to serve you and brings him the chicken and that night, Radovid would stay there to sleep. So the Baal Shem Tov would give him his own bed. Remember, it was a small house, didn't have, giving his own bed. And he goes to sleep in the bed with his wife as uh, from Jews, religious Jews, especially in those days, 
how much but, uh, would especially be careful not to sleep in the same uh, bed with the wife because of the days of the month in which we keep a separation and in front of the guests of course you never tell them when that is well we are in separate beds so the Balshamtov would offer his own bed and go to sleep with his wife let Rav David think that we are um, you know, peasants, ignorant people who don't know these things, and gave him a kvart and shisel. This is a modern-day plastic-made kvart and shisel, where we put the water to wash in the morning and pour the water here as we are washing our hands. Um, so gave him one, of course, was not made of plastic, was whatever they had back in those days, um, and gave him that with water so that in the morning he can wash his hands when he wakes up. At midnight, the Baal Shem Tov stood up. The, as uh, Rav Dover is telling the story, he says, I heard that the Baal Shem Tov would not sleep at only two hours at night. So he heard. So the Baal Shem Tov stood up and went next to the stove. Stove, fireplace, oven, one place in the house where there is fire does all these all these uh, functions we'll call it the stove went to the stove uh, in a very discreet way silently he shouldn't be seen and dedicated himself to do the things he did his secret Kabbalistic meditations recitations things we don't even mention what they were he went to do that suddenly Rabdovid wakes up he sees there is this great light coming from the lower part of the stove and then there is this light coming up upward and he thinks the place is in fire maybe there was a you know dry wood store inside to to do for, for to use for cooking and the whole thing is lighting up and the house could have uh, and go go into fire so he wakes up the Baal Shem Tov's wives, calling her by her first name, Hana, Hana. There is a fire in the stove, everything is going to go in fire. And she says, I'm sorry, sir. She speaks with him respectfully, but I am a woman. And by the time I get cover and I put, you know, my, my head cover and everything, we're going to be too late. Take the water you have next to you, go and throw it there. She relates to the, the fear of the fire, go, go take care of it. Rahman in Islam, she says, no, there will be a fire, God, God forbid, it shouldn't be upon us. Um, and uh, at the same time, she's like apolo apologizing for the way in which she's speaking to him so sharply. So she's been respectful, but go ahead, it's a red fire. So um, he stood up once again with the, the washing hand set, with the, well, she's with the water inside, and ran to the place where he thought the fire was. When he arrives at this fireplace, he sees that the Balshento is sitting down and the light is shining on him. It's coming not from the stove, it's coming from like below upward from him. There is an arc of light. And the Rav of our community says, uh, he's telling the story he hears from uh, Rav Gedali, right? He told me from his mouth, right to my ear, he he I heard that the, the light stood upon the Balshemtov in the shape of an arch. And as the Magid Misharim, as Rav David sees this, he's marvel and he faints. Oh, he just went, lost consciousness. Hanna, the Balshemtov Rabbitson, had to wake up, the Balshemtov had to confuse the Balshemtov out of his meditations, bring him back, and have him wake Rav Ovid from his fainting. In the morning, Rav Ovid, the Magid Misharim, said to the Balshemtov, that which I saw, tell me, what, what was it? The Balshemtov says, I don't know. I was reciting Tehillim. And it's possible that I became attached. The vacus is the, the vacus is, is uh, you know, in communion, unity with Hashem. 
And that's what happened. You saw this, this the vehicles. This is what you saw. Dovid realizes something. And he gives a, a gazeta, he gives a sentence as the authority of a rov. You have to rebuild. The Vashem Tov rebuilds, I'm a Tzadik Nista. And now, Vashem Tov answers with his own gazeta, right? From now, from then, that day on, David, the Magid Misharim of Kolomei, would come to the Baal Shem Tov to learn from him, his, to listen to his Torah. And when he would go and teach this, his acquaintances, his friends, people in his community would ask him, where do you know this? Like, this is so above you. And he would tell them, I learned that from a poor, very poor, humble person. Not revealing from whom. And when Rav David would see, when Rav Gershon would come to admonish the Balshemtov with sharp world, words, the way he would give him his tohaha, his admonishment, <coughs> he would say to Rav Gershon, leave him alone. He is wiser than you. The Balshemtov had given a gazeta that he cannot reveal. So he wanted to save the Balshemtov's honor, but he would just say that. In the version of the the Shiv uh, Hashem Tov in Yiddish, he says that he was doing it in the manner of a joke, so they wouldn't look like he's defending the Hashem Tov, that he knows what the truth is. And that is the story. Shavua Tov, a good Tevoch. <laughs>